Right, so last stream we got the render or the draw layers done, so we can now have layers of drawing that happened before something else, but ends up going on top still. Um, so this is drawn before, but it's in the layer above, so it goes up on top. So now that we've got that, we can actually do popovers and combo boxes. So I was just looking into behavior of how it works in, in the web browser. So essentially, like when you click on the combo box, this thing is, is like a popover, right? So we're going to be doing the popover first. Um, so when you sort of click on it, the popover becomes active. When, then when you click on anything else, it closes. But you also ca can click over something else, which is hoverable and clickable. But these don't respond since this popover is up, right? So notice how I clicked there and it didn't submit it. But now if I click it, it will submit, right? So this is the behavior that we want to have in R1 as well. So we're going to start on that now. All right, so we've just gone and designed the API. So I wrote the usage code first and was thinking kind of like the behavior of how I want this popover thing to work. Um, so the basic idea is you give it a position on the screen and you give it some dimensions. And then you're basically saying, like, how do I want to align this box with these dimensions around this position, uh, this point on the screen? So here we're saying this point on the screen is at the top left, right? Um, and then we'll work out how to put the box around it. So obviously there's some box style as well. So here's the prototype here. So if you have the screen, you say, we got a combo box and we go, hey, um, of the starting point here, um, and the dims are gonna be this much across, this much down, and we're saying it aligns to the top left. If it didn't align to the top left, then it wouldn't be here. So if it aligned to the bottom left, it would go around like this way instead of the other way around, or bottom right, sorry. So it allows you to even do stuff that's like centered so this would be center right. Um, so that'd be quite quite flexible and quite nice. All right, so we've just got the uh, popover code implemented now. So here it, here it is. So here's this sort of align point, which you'll see in the code again. So if we change the alignment, so this is where the position is aligned to the lower left. Uh, and we change it, this is lower middle. This one is aligned to the lower right. Uh, left middle middle, middle, right, middle, and when the point is aligned to the top left, top, middle, top, right. So these are the different ways you can uh, uh, align the popover, which is quite nice. So our, our, um, our combo box is gonna be like this one, right, the top, middle. That'd be super cool. Um, so yeah, we just debug drew the point with our draw API here, so we'll get rid of that at some point. But um, so let's go to the actual user code. So we did have to change the API a bit. So it's always going to be visible. That's what we decided to settle on. So it's always going to be visible. So you get back the rectangle where you start drawing all the children of the popover. So basically it's the same input parameters. Um, so it's 300 in uh, on each axis and it's got 300 width and height. So then we center align this change align button and we, every time you click it, it just ups the align and we get to test them all out. So we also added the ability to clamp it with inside the, the screen. So we move this to 100 on the X. We'll see that when you change the alignment, um, that it won't always stay inside the screen. So this is not really centered anymore, right? And Oh, work like that. So that's pretty nice. Um, and it works on any edge of the screen. So the popover always be visible and it always be clamped inside the bounds of the screen. So let's go into the implementation of this. Um, so we added a new, yeah. So when we go into the function, we reset the clip rectangle. So it's the whole screen. So nothing gets clipped. Um, we use this new function, which basically takes in that uh, position the dimensions of the popover and how to align it to based on the position, right? Um, which we'll just briefly look at that in a second. We then do the standard create your widget and we always ensure that it is visible. So I guess this only won't be 
this will maybe fail if the screen becomes less than a pixel or sorry zero pixels um then we increment the draw layer the thing we made last devlog we draw the the box for the popover and this is me doing the debug drawing which we'll delete then when we end the popover we decorate the layer and end the widget um yeah so let's look at this function here just quickly so i already had another function like this um but basically we just figure out where the minimum of the rectangle is going to be based on the alignment so if we align it the point to the bottom left the min is equal just to the the point whereas if it's sort of the middle bottom ends up being like take away the half x so that means that point will be aligned to the middle bottom of the of the box so we just essentially work out the, the minimum of the rectangle and then after the rectangle we apply so after all that alignment stuff we have the max is just the min plus the, the the dimensions of the popover rectangle and then here we do some clamping with inside the, the bounds of the the screen so we do the max first so we bring it in from the right hand side and the top we bring it in and then we then check the minimum and then we bring it in from the minimum that way if the box ends up being so you got the window and if the box, the popover ends up being bigger than the um, actual window, we bring it in first from the right, and then we bring it in from the left. And that will mean that at least the popover's lower left will be aligned nicely, right at least. Um, that'd, be, that'd be cool. So that's the design we're going for that one. So now we've got this implemented, let's go and implement the, uh, the combo box. Right, so we've just written out the combo box API and so we did the usage code and then we did the API afterwards. So this is the more complex version which the simpler version is going to be implemented with. But basically you have your persistent uh, combo box state like the list state that we saw from the previous uh, devlog when we did that. Um, so you have your rectangle that you would have made where you, the combo box populates and you then say if the combo box is open, right, it returns this sort of open enum, which would be zero for not open and true for open. If it's open, we go over all of the items which are in the scroll area. It's gonna use the list thing under the hood. And then it returns that item range out to you. And you basically go over all the button and do the buttons manually and say, hey, if this thing is selected then I can change my enum or whatever so this gives you the control of first of all ch ch choosing how you style those uh, widgets inside the combo box but also gives you more control on how you want to set the value once it's been selected that's that's quite nice to have so here's this this state here so we'll have this sort of persistent state of the scroll y of the box when it's open uh, so you'll be able to well yeah you, i guess you can change that yourself manually if you wanted to um here's the item range that comes out um so we use that here obviously we need to set the item height to say hey, how big is each of our items going to be so you can calculate how big the scroll bar needs to be and how far it needs to scroll and how many values are going to go into this combo box so again it can set the scroll bar properly the simpler version is here where the most common case is we just want to change an enum so we're going to have a bunch of different ones of like a u32 u8 u16 um, and these ones taking the pointers to, to the value to change the number of values and all the strings for each value in the combo box. And this will be implemented using this under the hood. Um, and it returns a Boolean to say when it has changed. So it's just a bit different, the other prototypes there. So now we're gonna go ahead and actually implement these two under the hood, and you'll see that in just a second. Okay, so we've gone and implemented the combo box. Um, so let's just take it for a quick spin. So if we click on it here, you notice how it opens up. There's nothing displayed, nothing selected at the moment. And we can scroll down. This is just the list thing that we've seen before, but in the popover now. And we can click out and it closes. And also we can select an item and it will show up here. So I didn't 
quite go with that behavior that I said earlier where you would stop, be, stop being able to hover over things and click things while this is open. Um, yeah, it's just a bit more extra faff to do and it's not really a, a big issue, so I've just decided just to leave it. This is the behavior. Um, can always just change that later. Um, but yeah, so let's dive into some of the code now and see how that works under the hood. Uh, well, actually, I want to show you quickly that if we move it to the edge of the screen, you'll see the behavior that we worked on for that popover, where it will simply keep the popover within the, the bounds of the screen. So this all works as, as normal. So that's quite nice. Great. Um, so that's super cool. So this is the more complex combo box API. You would use, you would use this if you want like a custom um, custom selectable widget inside the combo box. Um, but but basically like you, you'd use probably the shorthand one for the most part. So here's us just got like, you know, all of our values here. Um, and we use this combo box state. We it's persistent, right? It's static. We initialize it to 28 pixel height for each item inside the list. And we've got this many items. Then we have the selected value index. And we're saying that, hey, that, that's preview box, that little selected item string is gonna be, if it's not selected, nothing. If not, it's the, the selected value, right? Um, so that also has to be passed in as well, which we'll see why in a bit. Um, and then we basically just cut a rectangle for where the box is gonna actually go on screen. And then we say, if the combo box is open, go over all the widgets and uh, yeah, um, put a, a selectable button down. And if it's been pressed, then our selected va uh, value index is equal to the, the current index. And then we'll, we'll set is open to false. Um, something that we added just now is this sort of UI next widget no border. And it's because I wanted to keep using the same style um, at, but just disable the border and it, it was just a bit, um, I don't want to create a new widget. And it also solves the problem for when we put this inside of um, a simple API like this one. And we only pass in one style. We don't have to pass in two styles. Um, so I've, I've made a way to just simply disable the border on the next widget. Um, and it, it's worked out okay, actually, it's not so bad. So let's dive into the internals of this and see how it works. So when we start our combo box, um, we pre-compute the ID hash, which basically combines the current hash, sorry, the current ID, uh, which is usually, it is usually the line number um, and it combines it with the parent widget. Um, you can get this ID hash. So um, this just starts a regular widget and it is fo focusable and pressable. So it's basically a button. Um, and if it's, if the combo, combo, combo box is visible, we're gonna go ahead and um, say, well, if you pressed on that combo box, we're gonna say, hey, this combo box is open. And we'll keep hold of the ID hash for the uh, certain combo box that is open. And then we're gonna store in that state that you passed in, that it is open. And the user can set this to false whenever they like. Now, when, when it's not been pressed, we're gonna only keep it open so long as this is, this ID hash is equal to the current uh, is equal to the open um, combo box. Now, if you click off of the, if you click and nothing was keyboard focused this frame, we've got this thing here where when we end, we end the frame. And if you just basically click on some, a, a widget, which is like not got any keyboard focus ability, we're going to then set this combo box open widget hash to none. So it will close that combo box. Um, then after that, basically we draw the box like, like it's a button, right? And then we 
picked up the clipping and then we've put all of the the text in there like the preview text so here's the selected item text string we'll just chuck it in here so we have to have since we don't have any of the values passed in by the state we have to have some string passed in so we can actually put a value in there um so we just draw that text then we draw the, the background on the right hand side so it's this one here this little red thing here and then we draw the two lines after that so that is basically drawing this that's all that code does so there's the two lines there um and then we end the that sort of clickable area that button basically with the drop down thing um and then we're saying if if it's open so you know we've clicked on it or something like that um and it has any items we're gonna go ahead and use that popover thing that we made we're gonna create the position to be the center of that box on the x-axis but at the bottom and then we're going to make it so that the um that, that is going to be in the top middle right so if the um so we want there, except that. so essentially we're putting the point here like at the bottom middle and we're saying that the top middle is where the uh, should be aligned to for this box. And then after we start the popover, we're going to go ahead and create a list. Create a list. We use that list state thing that we saw in the previous devlog. We populate with some of the some of the variables which are in and out variables, or, or just out variables. So we populate with the um, scroll y the item height and the items count we call the list widget and we will always ensure to be visible um, and then we populate the out variables which come out from the list states so the scroll y and the item range back into the combo box state so that gets that's visible and then, and then we take the rectangle which comes out from the popover goes into the list offsets it based on how much it's been scrolled and and adds some margin and padding to it or shrinks it by the, the padding in the border and then we pass that out in the rectangle pointer to the to the initial combo box function so we can cut at that and so we can uh, basically keep cutting uh, from that rectangle there and producing our list we do cut top, cut top for every item in the list view. Um, and notice here there is a combo box end only inside if the combo box is open. So we only return true, you know, or UI open, which is basically true, it's one. We only return that when we have done a list and a popover. Uh, the rest get UI not open. And then when we call end, we do a list end and a popover end. So now we've got the combo box working quite quite well. We just got to make sure that we're not having to do this long API all the time. We're going to implement this nice, quick, easy to use API, which is hopefully just a one liner and tells us when it's changed, which would be nice. I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so we've gone and added that nice and easy short version of the combo box so this one only works for enumerations basically from zero to the number of elements and yeah it's just a nice shorthand way of doing it and it returns true when the values have changed so this one is offset to the right so we have to see the difference or the slight difference so what i've done is i've this one here is the one we made before manually so i've taken that code and I've just made it work in a more, yeah, so I think I've, I've added a bit more spacing correctly, basically, we'll see that inside, but it, it basically works the same, right? It's just the code from outside, but we're able to achieve the same thing with a lot less code in user space, so that's nice. So they both select different values and all that, which is cool. So, um, let's take a look at the internals. So it's basically the same thing as we saw earlier, but we have a 
The type plus version, which takes in a void pointer with a value type, tells you if it's a U8, U16, or U32. Um, each of the other ones just call into this type plus one, so it's very easy just to share the logic. Um, and it's not required templates either, right? So it's just calling the same code. So basically we initialize the selected value to this um, and we, if all of the bits are on, we treat it as a U32 max, which means the value is not selected. Um, we also keep the combo box state here persistent. And the way that I look at it is only one combo box can be open at a time. So it should be okay. I need to test it with another widget. We'll test it in just one, one moment. But it should be okay to set the item state here, the height here. But only one will be open at a time. And the items count as well. Um, so we then select or set the um, selected item string based on that selected value index from the value strings passed in and then it's the same code we saw before basically with a for loop over the visible items uh, the, no, the, the no border thing um, but what we need all we need to do is is um, if we've selected something we set the comma box open which it hash to none so it won't be open after you've selected something um, and then we need to store the value back in to that pointer outside the function so we store the selected index back out and that's the the shorthand combo box thing all right so there's actually a bug in the shorthand combo box it doesn't keep them open um so just going to show you that here um so so basically like the is open does get set internally um in the combo box right when you initially click it to open to be true but after that, like it's expecting you to keep hold of that is open. So when you call it, when it gets called on the next combo box, it ends up being set to false because the current combo box open widget hash is not equal to that. So it just sets it to false and the other one closes, you know, so it just, it just messes up all around. So basically in this shorthand one, within this persistent state, we need to set it is open is when the open widget hash is equal to my id hash for this combo box um so if you do it that way that fixes the problemo so this one opens i can select what i want this one opens i can select what i want so yeah it's all good right so making progress on the combo box and popover stuff i've got that completed now so now they're both usable for the texture viewer in the next devlog. So this is day 113. If you want to catch the VOD for that, that's on the YouTube VOD channel. You can go and check the rest out there if you want to see more in-depth bits. Um, there's also the Twitch channel for even to catch it live. The, the timetable's on the website. If you click there, you'll be able to see it in your time zone. Uh, there's, there's also a Discord even to come and hang out. And if you want to get source code access to see the code and test it on Windows and Linux, you'll be able to, to uh, if you support via Twitch or Ko-Fi, be able to get the access to that right there. Right, thanks so much for watching guys, have a good one.